We're going to start this presentation by talking about why you might want to use Intel's integrated performance primitives. There are two things I have to say. First is performance. These functions are fast. Intel has taken the time to optimize these to take advantage of the Intel architecture. The second thing is that they are comprehensive. I have studied the list of functions which are offered, and they are vast. I can't think of a single thing that I would want to do that is not offered in this library. So in order to show all of this, we'll do three demos. The first will be a color conversion demo, the second will be a filtering demo, and the third will be an image statistics demo. So the first demo we're going to take a look at converts RGB data to HSV, or sometimes called HSL. I am calling a function that I developed outside of this short code segment that loads in RGB data. And this is raw RGB, so we don't have to worry about decompressing PNG or JPG or anything like that. The next thing we need to do is calculate the number of bytes in every source line. And the reason this is important is because some formats, such as BMP, always have to have an even multiple of four. So this lets us specify how many bytes the source is. There's a data structure that IPP needs, IPPI size, so we set its width and height so we can use it. Next, we're going to set the destination line bytes. Now, for HSV, essentially the first part is H. H is the hue, and that is going to be two bytes or a short, a short value. Um, the actual value ranges from 0 to 359. The next two values are just bytes. So we need four bytes per pixel in order to store the destination. Finally, we allocate the destination buffer, which is going to be height times the destination line bytes. And here we just make the final call into IPP. Now, as I mentioned before, IPP is very comprehensive. It supports many varieties of this. Um, I'm converting from 3 byte RGB values to the HSV, which is 2 bytes of H and then 1 byte of S and 1 byte of V. But as you can see here, there are very, very many varieties that IPP offers. So, as you can see, this is a very easy way to convert from RGB to HSV color space. The next thing we're going to do is median filter an image. If you use any art program, sometimes this is called blur. A median filter tends to blur images, and sometimes this is what you want. Okay, so we start off, we use the same function we used before, and load the RGB data. Then we have some setup here, the source line bytes, and the number of pixels, the destination size, and we allocate the destination. This lets you specify how you want to mask this operation. With this, you can actually median filter only part of the image and not the entire image. Finally, you make the call, which does the median filtering for you. It's very fast. Now we'll go ahead and run this. You can see on the left side, there's the original tulips image. Now on the right side, you can see the median filter tulips image. The last thing we're going to take a look at is one of IPP statistical functions. So many times when you're analyzing images, you need what's called a histogram. And a histogram basically is going to tell you how many times any particular color has appeared. So here, I'm using my standard load image data. I'm creating my setup variables and allocating my destination and I'm making a simple call to IPPI histogram. Now this has a number of different variations, um, each one for different um, variable sizes. But you can see how easy this is to use and it is also very fast and very helpful. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that in my personal opinion, IPP's image processing is simply amazing. The functions are fast, there are quite a few varieties you can pick from so you can get exactly what you need, 
and it saves you from having to write your own custom code.